unless you're in Mark, you guys can't go outside those amateur bands. Okay? We can come in to the amateur bands when so authorized by the FCC through the DOD and all this other list of things up there showing why we and where we operate. They coordinated to actually allow us to come in to the amateur bands using our Mars call signs. Now, one thing to belong to Mars, you have to be a licensed amateur. So that automatically, using your amateur call sign, obviously authorizes you in the amateur bands. But you can't go into the amateur bands using your amateur call sign and talk Mars stuff. They're mutually, supposedly, technically, mutually exclusive. So, every now and then, we get authorized, we get told, okay, go jump in the amateur bands now and use this dialogue. And they print out what it is they want us to say. And then we try to contact all you folks and say, hey guys, now you don't recognize me because I can't tell you my amateur call sign. But I've talked to a few of you guys over the past year. I don't think I've talked to any of the ladies, so I, that's why I didn't say, <laughs> say that. <clears throat> Some of our exercises are joint. Joint exercises. If you've been in the military, you know what I mean. If you haven't, it's screwed up. Um, but having said that, it's very beneficial and it works. We talk among the different services not only the different services, we're talking with the different three-letter organizations that have HF capability. And it really, it's, it's a heck of a lot more fun now for me personally than it was in the old days. Um, <coughs> let me go one more here. Okay. Okay, if you decide that you want to get your feet wet, get a taste of Mars or what have you, in this case, Air Force Mars, nothing against the Army guys, okay. Uh, first thing you'll need is an amateur license, and it should be at least a general so that you can operate into the amateur bands on the general HF frequencies. You can be a tech or anything else. Well, I don't know what that, or higher, obviously. You can be a tech or higher and operate on the Mars frequencies after you become a member of Mars, obviously. The second thing you'll need is a HF radio that will operate outside the Mars bands. Some of the older equipment <coughs> will. The newer equipment will if it's modified. Now, I had a, had a question about that. Um, Mars requires you to have HF capability outside the, outside the amateur bands. That modification can be made, should be made, at the time you purchase your radio, or if it's a, uh, right now it's unmodified, you have a choice, you can send it back to the, the company that made the radio or the company that you bought it from and for pretty cheap, 40 or $50, you can have them modify it. All it does is open up the entire radio transceiver for everything from approximately uh, 1.5 all the way to 30 plus. <laughs> Excuse me. Now if you have the knowledge and expertise, you modify it yourself. The clicker in there is it has to be an FCC typed radio. It can't be so old that FCC don't even know, FCC don't even know about it. Most of our radios nowadays, even the older helicrafts are typed, I think. Tom, am I right? Even the helicrafters have FCC typed on there. So it has to be FCC type, you have to get it modified, 
Now, if you're going to get it modified by anybody other than yourself, uh, to get them to do it, you're going to have to show them or send them a copy of your Mars certificate showing you're a member of Mars. Then they'll do it. Otherwise, they won't do it. Not technically legal. Uh, what you do with your own radio is, is obviously up to you. Then once you, uh, you meet those two qualifications, then if you're further interested, see me after here. I'll give you an application. Uh, fill it out. I'll take care of it from that point. And since you're here in the Oklahoma City, I'll probably be your trainer. Uh, and that's pretty, pretty easy. You've got a six-month window to complete it. You've got uh, two tests, you have, three tests you have to take. Uh, one is online cyber training, in other words, security, and the other is personal identification information training, what you can transmit, what you can't transmit, can or can't, and what you can and can't say on the radio and stuff like that. Then there's a 100-page open book at your own time test that you take. It's on all the manuals and procedures and Typical military style test. And uh, like I said, it's open book. And I can help you with, I can't give you the answers, but I can tell you where to find them, where to go. Um, and then when you get those boxes, then you go on the air and I can help you with that. Uh, and talk on the radio, get the jargon down. Then you run a few net controls station as a net control station a couple of times to get you in the groove and then we give you a full call sign and not a training call sign and turn you loose. Uh, I came back in after about a 10 year, 12 year layoff and the, the month I came in was the old Mars. The next month they told me to wait. The next month is when they went to this new Mars. Totally befuddled me. Uh, I didn't expect the level of competence that I was dealing with here. Uh, anyway, it's not the old Mars, it's the new one. If any of you old heads that are prior Mars want to give it a shot, that's fine. Uh, if not, I understand. Uh, I think it's been long-winded enough there's the contact points. Yes? I was just wondering, you know, back about 60 years ago, they would give away tubes and transistors and equipment. Do they still give away stuff? Uh, yes. Um, matter of fact, that's how I got my old helicopters up and running this box full of tubes. But uh, based on uh, my interface with the folks in this wing, very few people are using uh, tube stuff, even the amplifiers, uh, more of the automated stuff. That doesn't mean you can't, as long as there's an FCC type on the back. Um, but yeah, uh, matter of fact, the wing people constantly put out emails as opposed to on the air. Uh, emails about, hey, I've got this, I no longer use it. Anybody want it uh, for a reasonable price? That includes tubes. <coughs> Any more questions? Well, uh, let me start over here. Uh, you mentioned phone patches, which, uh, you know, I'm old and I remember when that was such a big deal. Yeah. I think I know about a club name anyway. Uh, <laughs> the bottom line is you, you mentioned a particular use for that. How much are phone patches really used <coughs> and why? Okay, in the context of this level, that is to say, the 10 wings, we don't use phone patches. Don't even have the equipment. But we have several Marscom, um, Mars Radio, the Pentagon radio station, the base support teams. They have the latest and greatest in foam patch capability to provide for the command structure that need to get to their station in Saudi Arabia, which 
real quick, which that was fun at McGuire during Desert Storm. Um, those are the ones that do the foam patch stuff. Okay. Thank you. We aren't required to do it, nor do we do it. Uh, the three or four years I've been back in Mars, never touched the foam patch. Okay. So that's not a requirement for you to have. Unless you <coughs> broaden your horizon, so to speak, and go to one of these other specialty organizations in Mars, then you probably have to have it. 